brand is Daniel. I'm the CEO and founder of Harlem's Fashion Row. And I am so excited for this real talk that we're about to have. I have with me here, Frances Armand, who I will have introduce herself and shout out her HBCU, as well as Bettina Benson. So I'm gonna pass it over to you, Frances, to do a quick intro. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on what time you're tuning in. My name is Frances Armand, and my wonderful and illustrious HBCU is Clark Atlanta University. I am a proud Panther to the core, <laughs> and I am the founder of Armand Consulting PR. It's a boutique PR agency that focuses on fashion, beauty, wellness, as well as talent. Love it. Thank you, Francis. Bettina? Hi, I'm Bettina Benson, founder and creative director of Chloe Kristen. Um, we celebrate the evolution of women through the art of design. And I hail from Florida A&M University. I'm a 2007 graduate of the School of Business and Industry. I love that. So wait a minute, Francis, what did you graduate in? What was your degree in? Oh, business administration oh. with a concentration in international business. Okay, so this is interesting because you both graduated with business degrees. You're both in fashion. You both own your own businesses. Very interesting. Um, I want to talk. So students are here. They're like, give us the real. And I think the first question I'm going to ask you is, what do you think it takes to make it in fashion as a Black person? I, the key word is tenacity. Um, you have to have drive. You have to have vision. Um, and also creativity. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be able to actually sketch and design. I think any facet in the fashion industry, if it's the business side, if it's the creative side, even now with um, like digital marketing, you need a sense of creativity. And then as far as business, meaning like thinking strategically on just different ways you can help a company. So it really in fashion, but I think across the board that goes for any industry, but I know in fashion, creativity and able to think outside the box and having that drive will take you so far. I love that. I'm going to ask you a separate question, Bettina, but you can come back to that. Francis mentioned tenacity. Can you give us a time when you really had to go there and pull out all the tenacity that you had with your business? Yeah, um, the, the, the word also that comes to mind is grit. And so I think that we have all like if we're if I'm talking to you today, Francis is here today because we made it through the last 18 months and that took grit and. Um, every day starting from when the world shut down being in this business figuring out what we were going to do um that took a mindset a certain mindset and it took grit and so the specific example for me is you know when all of my wholesale orders were being canceled um i thought about okay you know it wasn't easy to get to this point and i made it i walked away from my my cushy job and I committed to growing this business. So if I can get to this point, I can get over this hump. And so what we did, um, or what I chose to do was I chose to expand upon a direct sales program that I'd actually been piloting myself and um, got on the computer, reached out to women that had the ex background experience that I was looking for um, via LinkedIn, via email, any, any way I could get in touch with people um, and, you know, I don't take no for an answer. Um, you know, a no is a not yet. Um, and so ended up connecting with two women who are brought on as my sales directors. And by the fall launch, we had a, a sales team of 20 women that we launched in the middle of the pandemic. And so um, anytime, you know, and I think the gift of the gift of grit is that you're creating experiences that you can lean on and you, you can say, oh yeah, I did that. Like I, I, I did that, you know, and so um, when times get tough and, you know, we all still have them, I, that's something I look back to and to reflect yeah. on. I, I love that. You're talking about these last 18 months. <laughs> 
we've all had to call on something that was bigger than ourselves <laughs> in this moment. Goodness yeah. gracious. Um, what do you think it takes, uh, Bettina, I'll come back to you. What do you think it takes to get your foot in the door in retail and fashion? And if you could give us something very tangible, like students are sending their resumes off, what are people looking for? So I have a sales background. Um, I was in medical sales for 12, thir well, 13 years before I, um, you know, transitioned to this full time. And, you know, one of the things that I learned there is relationships matter. Um, and that, you know, sending out a resume or a note, um, you're in a pool of people, you got to figure out a way to stand out. And so, you know, reaching out to people directly, a, a, a huge question is, you know, okay, well, who else do you know? If someone can't do, can't do something uh, in particular for you, um, who else do you know? Or do you have any other suggestions? Asking that question can open up a world of possibilities. Um, being able to reach out to people directly, finding their contact information, re reaching out to them directly, and your network is your, is your net worth. Um, you know, I, and, and tangible examples of that are, um, Bur what, Birmingham, Alabama is a great market for us. Um, I went to a conference and met a group of women um, and have become part of this group that we call ourselves the, the Golden Girls. There's a story behind that. Um, but that was how a woman in that group is basically how I got a store, uh, an account in Mountain Brook, Alabama. And then we got another account in Mountain Brook, Alabama. And now we service Birmingham, Alabama um, on just like a direct sales basis. So through those connections, um, through that one connection, I got in with women that, uh, that are executives for the utility company. And then they hosted a trunk show for me and I met more women. And I just had a call yesterday with a contact from the, one of the utility company executives. So all of that came from going to a conference and making friends with one woman three and a half years ago. Wow. Relationships, relationships. We don't talk about it enough. Um, relationships are so important. Francis, what about you? What do you think, what's something tangible that you can give students that it takes to really get in the door? Research. Um, the information is is at your disposal. Um, back when I started, I'm not going to age myself. Oh, Lord. Francis, <laughs> don't do one of those. I'm not aging myself. That's when but, I started. <laughs> you know, um, coming out of a business, business background and didn't know anything about fashion, knowing that only thing I knew is that I wanted to get into the fashion industry. Um, so network is important, but also researching the industry. What is it about? Like, I've always liked, I was always fascinated about couture in the luxury space. So I had to find out who's the in and who's the insider in that luxury space. Who are the editors? Who, who, who are the celebrity stylists? Like I really took the time buying magazines and just looking up any articles I can find just so I can know, learn about the industry that I want to get into because I'm not familiar with it. And I think nowadays with social media um, and just Google, all that information is right in front of you. And it's good to have that information. So when you speak to key people, you can have a conversation. So they know that the person I'm gonna hire knows about this industry. They're not coming in. Of course you're coming in green, but you have some type of knowledge and it shows that you're really interested in it. You're really passionate about it and that you're willing to grow and learn. Um, so re research is definitely key. I love that. That's so important. When you're meeting with somebody and having that first contact, they want to know that you understand something about the fashion industry. Yeah. Um, what would you say, Francis, was your biggest challenge in being Black and breaking into the fashion industry? Um, the biggest challenge for me would be the fact that I'm a small business. And I'm a woman, a black woman at that, um, reaching out to luxury brands. Um, usually luxury brands, I mean, they, they're sold in like a Bergdorf or back then a Barney's, a Saks. So it's coming in and really proving myself saying that 
I'm the agency that you need to work, work with. And I'm competing with, you know, the top fives back then, like, a, like the top fives in New York. So for me, that was the challenge. Um, I had to overcome insecurities about that. Um, there's a model that Clark Atlanta, when you, when you enter into the school and you, it says, find, find a way or make a way. And I had to take that motto with me in starting this business. Like if someone said no, I'm like, okay, I'm going to find out why they said no, and then go to the next person and figure out how I can get them as a client. And till this day, I still use that motto. I still, I still have that mindset and I'm no longer, I mean, I've, I realized I had to know my worth. And I think that's all students, even if you're coming in, you feel like, oh, I, I'm, I'm a novice at this. You have to know that you are an asset and not a liability. So that's something, come, starting my business, I had to learn that, that I have something to give. I have a place in this world. I mean, I'm, we're in America, so everyone has an opportunity. So you have to realize in your mind, you have a place here and you deserve to be here. I love that because sometimes we, we, we struggle, right? With that imposter syndrome. I don't belong here. I don't know if I can do this. Are they better? You know, all the things. Um, but what I heard and what you just said was that absolutely you have what it takes. You find a way or you make a way, get going. Don't let anything deter you from stepping out there. Uh, Bettina, we're going to end on you. What was your biggest challenge and kind of, um, and getting your foot started in fashion and how did you work through that? Yeah, so, you know, coming into this industry with no no background experience, there definitely was that learning curve. And I've, you know, been fortunate to be able to learn so much from my team um, that, that I've been able to build along the way. But coming into it, um, not having that background was, you know, overcoming the perceptions of, you know, a Black woman um, that's offering a luxury product and, how much people think it should cost or what people think it should, you know, think it's worth, um, you know, especially when you see all these other brands and products on the market that probably aren't as, are as great as yours and people, you know, don't, don't blink at the price, um, you know, but I think with that I also had to confront my own issues with imposter syndrome and, you know, ultimately what I came, you know, to realize is that because I am a black woman, that you know even on my average day i'm i'm twice as good as most others um and so you know just by way of life quality is at core because i always have to show up as my best but that's just part of my character too um and so you know there's a there's a mutual exchange of benefit like yes i'm offering you something but you're also getting something by supporting me and supporting this business. Um, and again, just not taking anything personal. You know, Francis talked about the business school motto um, at Clark and ours was no excuse is acceptable and no amount of effort is adequate until proven effective. And so eventually when you approach um, anything that you're doing with, with the right energy, the right mindset, um, you, you keep putting that effort into it, you're eventually going to get something in return. And you know what? Um, sometimes it just boils down to finding your kind, finding your kind of people. Um, I think that you have to come into this industry knowing who you are and knowing who you want to serve because there are so many voices and, and opinions that are going to come at you. Um, but you have to filter that and ultimately bring it back to who you are, why you're here, what you want to accomplish and who you're serving. I love that. These school models, my goodness, my goodness. Thank you so much, Francis and Bettina. We so appreciate you being here with us. Thank you I know that y'all are like taking those, writing it down. Um, this, these were gems, absolute gems. Thank you so much. We appreciate it.